In this video, I'm going to solve this question. Before I start solving this question, I would like to tell you that if you need a list of questions related to probability with step-by-step -step solutions, then you may have a look at the link provided in the description below. All that said, let's get started with this question. The three most popular options on a certain type of new car are a built-in GPS, a sunroof and an automatic transmission. And we are given all this information about purchases request. Given all this information, we have to determine the probabilities of the following events. In part A, we have to determine the probability that the next purchaser will request at least one of the three options. So that means in part A, we have to calculate the probability of the event A, union B, union C. Well, actually, we don't have to calculate this probability. This probability is already given to us in the equation. So if you see here, it's given that 85% of the purchasers request A or B or C and A is built in GPS, B is sunroof and C is automatic transmission. So that means the probability of the event A union B union C is nothing but 0.85. So this is all for part A. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have to find the probability that the next purchaser will select none of the three options. So that means we have to find the probability of the event A complement, intersection B complement, intersection C complement. We can use De Morgan's law to calculate the probability of this event. According to De Morgan's law, the event A complement, intersection B complement, intersection C complement is equal to A union B union C complement. So this implies that the probability of the event A complement intersection B complement intersection C complement is equal to probability of the event A union B union C complement. And this is equal to one minus probability of the event A union B union C. And we know that this is 0 0.85. So that means the probability of the required event is equal to 0 0.1. Let's move to part C. In part C, we have to find the probability that the next purchaser will request only an automatic transmission and not either of the other two options. So that means we have to find the probability of the event A complement, intersection B complement, intersection C. Now there is no straightforward formula to find the probability of this event. So let us first represent this event in a Venn diagram and that would give us a hint about how to find the probability of this event. As you can see in this Venn diagram, this green shaded region represents the event A complement intersection B complement. And now we have to find the intersection of this event and event C. So the required event is this. So this yellow shaded region is the event A complement intersection B complement intersection C. Now it is clear from this Venn diagram that the probability of the event A complement intersection B complement intersection C is equal to probability of C minus probability of B intersection C. So we are subtracting this area from the event C minus the probability of the event a intersection C and now we are subtracting this area from event C and plus probability of the event A intersection B intersection C and we have added this probability because when we subtracted B intersection C and A intersection C we subtracted this area twice and this area is A intersection B intersection C. So to compensate for the double subtraction, we are adding this event here. Okay. Now all we have to do is plug in the probability numbers and solve it to find the required probability. But this is not that straightforward because if you look at the information provided in the equation, then you will see that we are not given any information related to this and this and this. So first of all, we have to find the probabilities of these three events. And once we have those probability numbers, we can use this formula to calculate the probability of the required event. 
So first of all, let's find the probability of the event B intersection C. So let's find the probability of the event B intersection C. Note that we are given in the equation that the probability of the event B is equal to 0 0.55. The probability of the event C is equal to 0 0.75. 7, 0 and the probability of the event B union C is equal to 0 0.80. And now to find the probability of the event B intersection C we can use the following formula. So probability of the event B union C is equal to probability of B plus probability of C minus probability of B intersection C. So we are given that this is 0 0.80, this is 0 0.80 plus 0 0.70 minus probability of B intersection C. Solving this we get that the probability of the event B intersection C is equal to 0 0.45. Similarly let us find the probability of the event A intersection C. We are given that the probability of the event A is 0 0.40 the probability of C is 0 0.70 and the probability of the event A union C is equal to 0 0.77. So we can write that probability of A union C is equal to probability of A plus probability of C minus probability of A intersection C. This is 0 0.77 and this is equal to 0 0.40 plus 0 0.70 minus probability of A intersection C. Solving this we get that the probability of the event A intersection C is equal to 0 0.33. Now let us calculate the probability of the event A intersection B. We can use the same method to calculate this probability and note that this probability is not needed directly in the formula but we also need to calculate the probability of the event A intersection B intersection C and to calculate this probability we'll be needing this probability. So that's why we first have to calculate this probability and only then we'll be able to calculate this probability. Well I'm not diving into the calculations once again but you can use the same method to calculate this probability. So you can use the formula that probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. We are given all these probabilities. So putting in all the values of these probabilities and solving for the probability of the event A intersection B, we'll get that this probability is equal to 0 0.32. Now finally, let us calculate the probability of the event A intersection B intersection C. And to calculate this probability, we can use the formula that probability of A union B union C is equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection C and plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. Well, we know all the probabilities except probability of A intersection B intersection C so we know that this is 0 0.85, this is 0 0.40, this is 0 0.55 plus 0 0.70 minus 0 0.32 minus 0 0.45 minus 0 0.33 plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. Solving this we get that the probability of the event a intersection B intersection C is equal to 0 0.30. So now we have all the probabilities that we need to find the required probability. So now we can use the formula to find the required probability. So our required probability is A complement intersection B complement intersection C and this is equal to probability of C minus probability of A intersection C minus probability of B intersection C plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. So now this is equal to 0 0.70 minus 0 0.33 minus 0 0.45 plus 0 0.30. And solving this we get that the required probability is 0 0.22.
So this is all for part C. Let's move to part D. In part D, we have to find the probability that the next purchaser will select one of these three options. And so in this case, we have to consider three events. The first event could be that the purchaser selects A and does not select B and does not select C. The second possibility could be that the purchaser does not select A but selects B and does not select C. And the third possibility could be that the purchaser does not select A and does not select B but selects C. And in this case, we have to find the probability of the union of these three events. So that means we have to find the probability of the event A intersection B complement intersection C complement union A complement intersection B intersection C complement union A complement intersection B complement intersection C. Well, at this stage, this might look very tedious to you, but let me tell you, it's not that tedious. So first of all, let's simplify the notations. So let's call this event R. This event is S and this event T. So that means we have to find the probability of the event R union S union T. Before applying the direct formula to find this probability, let us first visualize this event in a Venn diagram. As you can see in this Venn diagram, this is how we can represent the event T that is A complement intersection B complement intersection C. So this yellow shaded region is the event T and in part C we calculated the probability of this event only. Similarly, the event A complement intersection B intersection C complement can be represented by this red shaded region. So this is the event A complement intersection B intersection C complement and we are denoting this event by S. So this is event S. Similarly, the event A intersection B complement intersection C complement can be represented by this white shaded region. So event R can be represented by this white shaded region. So let me write down here that this is event R, this is event S and this is event T. Note that the events R, S and T are mutually exclusive events. So that means if you want to calculate the probability of the event R union S union T, then this probability is equal to probability of the event R plus probability of the event S plus probability of the event T. And this is because these events are mutually exclusive. So all the intersections between these events will be equal to zero. Now our task is to find the probability of these events. Well, we have already found the probability of the event T in part number C and that probability was equal to 0.22. So the probability of T is equal to 0.22. This we know from part C. We can use the same method to find the probability of R and S in this case. So we can write that the probability of the event R is equal to probability of A minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of A intersection C plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. Well, now we know all these probabilities because we found these probabilities while we were solving for part C. So we can directly put the probability values here. Once you put the probability values and solve, you will get that the probability of the event R is equal to 0.2. 0 0.05. Similarly, we can find the probability of the event S. So probability of the event S is equal to probability of the event B minus probability of the event A intersection B minus probability of the event B intersection C plus probability of the event A intersection B intersection C. And we know all these probabilities. So we can just put the values of all these probabilities and solving it, we will get that the probability of the event S is equal to 0 0.08. So now we know that the probability of the event R is 0 0.05, the probability of the event S is 0 0.08 and the probability of the event T is 0 0.22. So adding all these probabilities, we get that the required probability is equal to 0 0.35. So the probability that the next purchaser will select exactly one of these three options is equal to 0 0.35.
and this is all for this question.